I recently saw this case um, because of one of our viewers, uh, Kimmy, who sent me a link where someone was talking about this because there was a surviving roommate. And that's an interesting aspect to it, but I see multiple, multiple things that are very interesting surrounding this case um, that kind of remind me of the Idaho 4 Moscow student murders, um, where it's, it's, hmm, you know, um, there is a surviving roommate, it is a knife crime, um, and it's a house full of girls, and there were theories about drugs. Interesting. Weird, right? And, like, mobs. Yeah. Weird. <laughs> Super weird. So, this is Halloween 2004. We have Leslie Ann Mazzara and Adrian Insagna. I'm not going to keep saying her last name because I don't quite know how to say it. Like... I heard it said a lot, and I still, like, I know I'm butchering it. So, Adrian and Leslie, they were women in their 20s, you know, figuring out life. They were focusing on their careers. um, And that Halloween night, they were handing out candy. Hmm. So, they're handing out candy. Um, Adrian is... uh, She's more of, like, an intellectual, while Leslie is more of, like, a beauty queen, like, even won a pageant and everything. Um, And at the time, Leslie was working for a winery ran by Francis Ford Coppola, which was the director of The Godfather. Okay. Weird. (laughs) Yeah? Yeah. That, that, That might be why there's the mob idea you know what i mean yeah exactly that is exactly why you're right um adrian she worked at the napa sanitation district as the assistant engineer so you see leslie's like more social one adrian's more of like the intellectual serious one um yeah anyway and they had a roommate named lauren who ended up being the survivor So, that night, they're handing out Halloween candy, and then they all um, turn in, basically, for the night, and are hanging out um, after their little Halloween fun, and Lauren, the surviving roommate, ends up getting a phone call, is what I've heard, or just turning in for bed. So, this happened in 2004. There's, like... an. It's really weird because there's many documentaries on this, yet there's certain facts that get mixed up, and I don't know which documentary is accurate. Mm. Like, even later in this case, psychics got involved, but do you know how many documentaries talk about the psychics involved in this case? Hmm. One out of tons. Like, nobody talks about the psychics that were involved in this case that actually helped literally solve it. Well, I mean, it could be public perception. You know what I mean? You you know what's interesting is a lot of people, especially in the true crime community, put down psychics so much. But do you know how many times actual police use actual psychics? The office, One of the officers was talking about it in this documentary I was watching about the psychics, and the psychics literally basically broke the case. Y- I know it's they, happened they the, so many times. They are a huge reason it got solved. It like ju- huge. it just I think psychics bring a lot of it's either black or white because they are either legit or fake. Right. You They're know? either a con yeah. artist or legit, but yeah. it's like can you even be a legit psychic is a lot of people's question. Like, is that even possible? Yeah. I mean, statistics around police cases and investigations being solved once using a psychic is like above 50%. So, I mean, hmm. Yeah, I know. So, 
Like I said, they're handing out candy. They let's just say they all turn in for bed, whether Lauren got a phone call or not. She she goes to her room, she turns in, and then she hears her roommates going upstairs and okay. going to bed and saying good night until about you know they're all asleep, and then at two a.m., Lauren is woken awoken by glass shattering and blood curdling <sighs> screams. Immediately. She is, like, trying to figure out what is going on. She's hearing footsteps. She's hearing screams. She's terrified. And she peeks out her door. She stands there. She's trying to see what's going on. And she sees a man um, going down the stairs. Um, and I've heard that she heard him crawling out of the basement window. But then in some of the documentaries, I don't hear that. All I know is this man was trying to evade the home and she herself went, ran and went out of the door and hid outside. Okay. She takes off running. As he's trying to get out of the house? Yeah. Oh. But she doesn't get caught by him. Um, she waits out there for a little bit and then she goes back inside and she checks on her roommates and she finds, um, one of her roommates, Leslie is face down on a pile of clothes. Um, you know, it's, she can see the wounds, the stab wounds. It's a, it's a mess. And then Adrian is huddled in a corner, um, but still alive, barely, uh, Leslie in, in one of her interviews or Lauren, I mean, in one of her interviews says that, you know, she was there, but, but not really. She's like, you know, I'd never seen anyone die before until then. Um, mm. and it sounds like this, this was incredibly hard for her. Of course, like incredibly hard. Um, Adrian asks for her to get help. She runs and grabs her cell phone and thinks, I don't know if the killer's still in the house. Sure. So she, I mean, but she, at the same time you hear about him escaping, I don't know, maybe she was just being safe, but she runs and grabs her cell phone and then she gets in her car and starts driving away while on the phone with 911. Okay. So I guess self-preservation just kicked in, you know, um, you know, she says like, we've been attacked. It's a bloody mess and everything. And they're like, who? And she's like, I don't know. And they come out there and sadly, both girls, Adrian and Leslie pass away at the scene. Um, well, they find cigarette butts outside. Mm -hmm. They find, which are a specific type of cigarette butt. Uh, in 2004, Camel, Tur is it Turkish gold, right? Turkish gold? Yeah. Is that what they are? Yeah, I think there's Turkish golds, there's Turkish silvers, like I think Turkish so. gold, I'm pretty sure I have that name right of the cigarettes, but that was a new brand, like literally had just come out in 2004. Okay. They find those, they find multiple, burned down to the butt, meaning that person was there for a while. Like, they were sitting there for a while, deciding okay. or watching, whatever. They were there a long time. Um, they collected those. There was also evidence of blood splatter on the wall. Um, so it appeared that the killer had injured themselves while committing this crime. Um, they collected that. And it took a long time for them to figure out who did this. It makes um, me wonder if it's someone young with new cigarettes like that, because you know, a lot of old timers have their type of cigarettes that they smoke and they stick to them. It was a younger person. Oh yeah. So, um, it, it took a really long time. So originally the police felt like because Leslie, um, was dating a lot, Okay. And she was like a pageant queen that it for sure was she was the target. Okay. And so they start investigating all of the guys she went on dates with. Um, there was some weird stuff about one of her ex-boyfriend's fathers continuing to inappropriately call her. Even that night, he had called her that night. 
And it bothered her. That's literally why she left her boyfriend, I think, is because of his weird father. And he was still calling her and called her that night. He got cleared. They collected over 200 men's DNA. And none of them, all of them were cleared. None of them were the guy. 70, what did I tell you? 74? Yeah. So I saw one of the, the lab technicians or somebody, a forensic scientist, come on and say, we got 74 pieces of evidence turned into lab for this case. She's like, that is incredible because we normally only get like one or two sent to the lab. I was like. This is a major case of incompetence. Clearly, no, the, I don't know, man. The cops seemed like they were really on it, like from the beginning. They collected over two hundred and something people's DNA. Yeah, but that's testing pe- other people to match one piece they already have. Yeah, there was no matching code. So that that doesn't add to their physical evidence. A physical evidence is normally an expertise that they come in and they're able to see areas that they could gather or gain evidence that would be beneficial for a trial. So when you see a lack of quantity of evidence, then you either have somebody who doesn't have enough experience to understand that like, hey, you know, taking pictures in this way or gathering this or checking mists here or you know what I mean? Like that's all evidence. So uh, probably your CSI or your investigators don't have experience and understand that that can help you. That can, you know, finding a suspect is like solving a puzzle. Yeah. So I don't know if that's the total pieces of physical evidence collected. That is what was turned over to the lab. Oh, 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 got it. Got it. Got it. So I don't, I have no idea. Yeah, that could be a totally respectable number then. That you don't turn over every piece of physical evidence to the lab. That's just what needs to be tested and further analysis. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Um, but her saying that they normally only get one or two was kind of odd to me. Um, anyway, uh, I thought that was an interesting number. It's just something to note, you know, uh, as instructive for future cases of evidence turned over to a lab for a double homicide in a home of two girls, and it's a stabbing, okay? Um, so they, they go on this wild goose chase, you know, with all of these men, never considering that Adrian was the target, never considered that Mm. they always considered it Leslie. Um, now Adrian had a best friend named Lily. Um, Lily, what they were supposed to go on some trip together. I think they were going to like go climb a mountain together or something. And Lily had literally called off her engagement to her fiance, um, because of some of Adrian's advice, uh, because they were having a lot of issues because her boyfriend, Eric Koppel, uh, Coppola was a drunk And uh, they had a lot of problems in their relationship, and she wanted to go on this trip with her friend, um, and so she called off the wedding. Hey, good for her if she's not seeing what she needs to see. Now, Lily was seen in documentaries and everything saying somebody has to know something. Um, You know, I don't know how... If you saw your friend or, you know, somebody, you know, uh, they would be acting strange. Like you would have to know if they were a part of this because they would have a wound. Like they'd be acting weird. You would see something's off. Um, And she seemed highly supportive in every way in trying to get this case solved. And so was Lauren, the surviving roommate, which the surviving roommate, I don't know if this is it's comparable to the situation Dylan Mortensen was in because they were in a very similar situation of hearing things and looking out the door. But this girl did not go into frozen shock phase. She went into self-preservation mode where she ran outside and then she went and looked to go help her friends. And then she ran back outside and got her car and called 911 and got help. Yeah. That's just her. That's just her, uh, that auto reaction type. That's an inherent reaction. The, the free, flight, uh, uh, fight, flight, 
freeze and something else. I always forget the fourth one. There, well, hers I think was four. flight. Right, 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 right. And <laughs> hers was I'm out of here. And for most people, these are inherent traits. You you can't even there's nothing you can do about it unless you put yourself in the situation over and over and you can it becomes normal where you don't have that adrenaline spike where it's auto reaction. And then you can control it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um so there police are coming to essentially a dead end and one of Lauren's friends schedules an appointment with some Hollywood psychics. These Hollywood psychics um you know, end up giving really little bits of information where Lauren was like, okay, that's weird. Because the first thing one of them said was, oh, the first investigator on the scene, she had to leave. She couldn't be here. It made her sick. And Lauren true? looks, because the co- one of the cops went with her and she's like, looking at the cop, is that true? And he was like, yeah, and that's not publicly released information. And then they start talking about, like, um, do you know, there's several, there's two sessions, okay? Because the cops actually went back to talk to the psychics after this on their own. Yeah. Because there was so much information. Um, But a few of the, just to combine them both and the information they got from the psychics was, they said, do you know a, a person named Lily? And Lauren's like, yeah, that's one of... It's one of Adrian's best friends, and they wrote it off. They were like, oh, that means nothing. She's just probably talking about Lily because she's her best friend and wants to, like, give her a message or something, you know? Um, And so it's a team of two psychics. One does the talking. One sits there and draws images from the other side. And they drew an image. No way. And it looks like the killer. (laughs) No way. For real. I look. I don't and, doubt uh, psychics. I think that sci- uh, psychics is just a science that we aren't there yet. I don't think it's all like woo voodoo and stuff. No, there's going to be a way to measure it. We're just aren't there yet. Yeah, you, you may be. I I think you might be right because memories. We've just recently proven that memories uh, are have, material. Have like, matter. Have matter. They do things. They re, they make water freeze in certain ways and and do certain things. We're able to prove that it, it has you know matter to it. So like, how do we not know psychics aren't just able to? in tune themselves with these random things laying around that are the memory matter, you know? I don't know. It's, Our science it's just isn't there to measure it yet. Yeah. So, um, and they also got um, something about the cigarette butts. Um, gosh, what was it? Um, it was something about the cigarette butts. And, and that struck like that that basically flipped a light switch in Lauren's head about I think they they specifically said the brand of the cigarette butts to Lauren and Lauren didn't know that and um it wasn't I don't think it was publicly released information either and it flipped a switch in her head and she's like oh wait Lily's boyfriend Eric Coppola smokes those cigarettes that's weird, you know? And in all the documentaries, they completely skip over the fact that the police only got this information from Lauren because of a psychic. They just admit, omit that completely. It's probably not good for movies because so many people doubt psychics. Dude, it's great for a movie because it's incredible. I, I, and people love that voodoo stuff. What are you talking about? That's why those movies are big. Not everybody. Not everybody. No. You're right. I think it's but, like 50-50. Okay, maybe. Yeah. But anybody who's Christian is more than likely, especially Southern, like like Baptist, is going to be like, nah, that's the devil, bro. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I it, mean, the devil's out here helping it, solve crimes. It, ke- it creeps people out, so... I don't think it's as accepted as. Yeah, but what I mean, I, I don't want to get into anyway, like the politics no. of that no, no, or no, no, anything no, no, like no. that. Moving I, on. I, like I said, I believe it's a science. No heebie-jeebie voodoo. Like it's 
it it will make sense. Okay, so anyway. So they she gives them Eric Coppola's name and come to find out it's over a year later. Um, and he was never even on the radar. He was never interviewed. Uh, they never collected a DNA sample from him. Um, nothing. And you're trying to tell me that these cops weren't incompetent? What? He was overlooked. Um, I think that's weird. They clearly but- never built a tree, a suspect tree, because it, with every single person... What man and what are, do they have a relationship? Are they, you know, straight? Are they gay? Are they whatever? Okay, now who was the person that they were closest to? Who's that? Like, what? It, I agree. It wouldn't have been overlooked. I agree. It should. It should have been. It should have been looked at. Anyway, so it's a mistake. It, it is, is a, what it is. It's, it is a mistake, and they admit to that mistake. They do. Oh well, that's all. Yeah. That's so yeah, accountability enough. Like things happen, bro. Yeah. So they uh, actually, after Eric seeing some information break on the news about the case, he was feeling a certain type of way and was like, I'm going to get caught anyway. Uh, I should just go turn myself in. And what's funny is after Adrian and Leslie's death, Lily thought oh my gosh life is short she wasn't going on that she said she wanted to go climb that mountain for a friend because she couldn't and adrian actually had said that she would die happy knowing she climbed that mountain and died before she could ever do it which is really really sad so she was saying she was going to go climb it and everything and then decided that life was short i'm just going to marry him and marries him so this whole year He's being overlooked for the murder of her best friend, and she freaking married him. No. And had had Adri- oh. had Adrian's mother and family come to the wedding and speak. No way! Oh my gosh! Like like we're a part of the wedding. Adrian's family. That is so messed up. Yeah. Super messed up. Also, come to find out, that Halloween night, Eric and Lily had ended up crossing paths at a Halloween party, and some kind of conversation that didn't go well. He was angry. He was, I think, drunk. And he decided... That Adrian was the reason that Lily didn't want him anymore. He would never admit to a motive when he confessed. He would never admit to a motive or why he did it. But this is what is assumed based off of what he said and what Lily has said. His jealousy. Oh man. He can admit his jealousy, but he was resentful, possessive over Lily, and the fact that Adrian he felt like she was taking her Lily away from him because they were going on this trip and she called off the wedding and everything. So he decided Adrian was a problem and he's going to kill her. And it was him. It was all him, all him. Um, he said he had no memory of entering the home or what transpired afterward. Um, apparently he had, I think he had actually been waiting there for a little bit inside the home at one point from what i heard on the documentary um but yeah he he also said he has no idea what he did with the murder weapon like they couldn't ever find the murder weapon either like uh, it sounds like he was like blacked out drunk almost oh jeez in some parts of this and they obviously the dna matched and it was in fact him um and for that he didn't get the death penalty because he confessed. Um, and you know what's crazy? Is at his sentencing, Lily had the gall to go up there. And and she had a really good relationship with Adrian's family and everything. And go up there and say, there's nothing you could ever do to make me not love you. And we're having to watch this stand-up man go down for this crime. Like... Really? 
girl, he killed your best friend because he felt like she was taking you away from him and then you married him and he lied to you this whole time about it and hid it from you and you're going to get up there and say all that? Crazy. Delusional. Yeah. And she was the one on the documentary saying, how could you not know? When you see the signs, they would have an injury, you know, like saying somebody has to know something because you would see your friend acting weird. Yeah. But the dr- the drug theories were all about Leslie working at that winery with the director of The Godfather and that they somehow got caught up in some stuff and they thought that... Um, somehow he was uh, involved in the actual mob, the director. Okay. Um, and there was a lot of theories and it, it bothered the families a lot. The, the theories and there was a lot of rumors surrounding this case, kind of similar to the Idaho four at Did that time. Did it actually bother the families and or was it news saying it's bothering the families? I don't know because I didn't live I would I didn't watch it back then mm. but I did see one clip of the mom of Adrian saying of course it was the inner circle. She's like this whole time they're looking for an outside they're thinking it could be a serial killer you know they're thinking yep. and it was the inner circle of course it was how could I be so dumb? It normally always is. It normally always is. Because otherwise there's no incentive. There's it, no... It's either a serial killer or it's the inner circle. Yep. Yep. And a serial killer leaves tracks normally. You know what? I was calling it Eric Coppola the whole time, but the director's name is Francis Ford Coppola. I think it might just be Coppola. Okay. That's a really strange similarity. Yeah. Like in last names. Um, but that that's their story. Um, yeah, that's and interesting. It is interesting, and I see a lot of similarities, but also the whole psychic aspect. Like, that sent my mind for a loop. I was like, I wasn't expecting to see psychic involvement here. <laughs> like, yeah. at all. Um, I'm actually going to... Write it down so that we can do more follow up onto psychic statistics. In my opinion, yeah, no, that's a that's be. a great idea, um, a great idea. Um, but you know, I hope that Lauren, the survivor, is is prospering and doing well and has healed and moved on from this. I hope the families are all okay. Um, you know, this was quite a while ago, but those scars last a lifetime. Um, and I'm glad this case was solved and that Adrian and Leslie got justice, real justice. It may have took a little while, but it finally Mm -hmm. came and psychics did indeed help. Psychics broke the case. Yeah. They broke the case, unlike what 48 Hours would want you to think. So, um, yeah, this is a really, really interesting case. And I want to know what you guys think. If you think there's any standouts in this case when comparing it to Idaho 4, um, any details I didn't talk about, please leave it in the comments below. I would love to hear more about this case um, and just any ideas or thoughts you have surrounding it. Yeah, let us know.